These lands at the southern edge of the San Joaquin Valley are the traditional homelands of the Katanamuk people. In this contemporary time, we are better known as Tohon Indians. Our Katanamuk ancestors loved and cared for these lands from time immemorial. We believe Creator placed us here in the valley. Our tribal history states, when the old ones were asked, since what time the Katanamuk have lived here, it was answered, we were here from the first time the first sun came up. Through the historical atrocities supported in California, namely being affected by an unratified treaty, the Katanamuk people were left landless. No land base, rancheria, reservation, or land allotments. While without land, the Katanamuk people are challenged to continue as caretakers of this region. This does not diminish our ancestral ties to the land that our ancestors lived, died, resisted and survived on, and where we continue to thrive today. One of the responsibilities we had as caretakers of this area was to welcome visitors, house and feed those traveling, and to host our relatives and family while we share in celebration. Akuhulpo, Jake Nithwanea, Nikits, Bakersfield, Nakim Tahon, and right now we're at CSUB, which pretty much is the home of our uh, fourth annual to home powwow. We've had it for here for four years. Well, powwows, the significance is it's the, um, the tradition. Because these dances that dancers do have been around longer than some of these kids and some of the adults. For hundreds of moons is what we say. That's how long it's been here. It's been probably longer. But um, it's the sobriety of our people and us staying in good health and good mind and just to get together on the weekend or the weekdays um, to come and celebrate dance, eat, hang out with people, your friends, your family. So uh, it means a lot to me knowing that they're still around. My favorite part of how I was coming here real early in the morning, seeing everybody, you know, just waking up, you know, haven't even had their hair braided yet, saying good morning, and then later on, grand entry, seeing everybody all dressed out. You know, it's real, it's a lot of fun coming out here and dancing with everybody, you know. You meet new friends, you see family members, and you get to know people you never thought, you know, in a million years, maybe that. Powells really bring people together, just like going to like parties. So I feel like this is like, like a big family reunion. Good morning guys, uh, my name is Tommy Gonzalez. I am the current vice chairman of the Tohon Indian Tribe. And I'm here to welcome everybody at this powwow. It's a, to me, it's very, it's very meaningful because it, 100 years ago, we weren't even allowed to do this in front of in public. Uh, it was always done in hiding or in the backyard somewhere. But now we get to come out and celebrate with other people, other other cultures and let them know that you know hey there's still native people here uh, we're here to celebrate with you guys you know hand to hand and so that we're still friendship you know work those friendship relations out still I am Catherine Montes Morgan. I'm the honorary chief and past chairwoman of the Tohon Indian Tribe. What a great day we have been given by our creators to be able to come together in friendship and to be able to enjoy this beautiful campus of Cal State Bakersfield for our fourth annual powwow. I want to welcome each and every one of you to the traditional homelands 
of the Kadunamuk people and to our annual power in the same spirit that my ancestors probably welcomed your ancestors in the days gone by. I am so thankful and so humble to those of you who have chosen to travel to be here with us today. I want to thank the Bakersfield community for coming in here to support our tribe and our powwow. Hello, I am Lynette Zelesny. I am the president of California State University, Bakersfield. It is an honor to be with you today in this very special community and with your families. And I'm very honored to respect the elders and your ancestors. I also am very grateful for the beauty of this day, the sacredness of this land, and the blessing of our friendship. Thank you. Having the tribe host the powwow means bringing our communities together, not only our Native American community and tribal nations together, but our community in Bakersfield. My name is Gloria Morgan. I'm the eldest daughter of the Chief Catherine Morgan. I was prior on the executive council, but I no longer serve now, and now I just help out doing various activities and things with the tribe. Fourth Annual Powwow is a great experience for us to uh, make contact with the community, make new friends, new neighbors, but also to reinforce the idea that we've li lived in Kern County, we've worked here, we're already your friends, we're already your neighbors. Ya Numuach Tamia, Sandra Hernandez, Nithawanea, Akiki Tamia, Nakin Tahon, and Keats Bakersfield. Hello, good day. My name is Sandra Hernandez. I'm Katanamak from Tahon, and I live in Bakersfield. Here today celebrating the powwow means a lot for our tribe to be able to bring all these different nations together and share in our culture to learn from each other and to be together. Some people travel a long way to be here with us today. Some people are from this area, but everybody took time in preparing their hearts and their minds to be here as one people, celebrating and sharing our culture with the community as a whole. And to see them. My name is Joseph Garfield. I come from Tule River Band of Yokuts, uh, by near Portville, California. Um, we're uh, reservations at 56,000 acres, you know, um, uh, land base we have up in the Sequoias. Um, I'm an elder uh, as well from our tribe, as well as a grand grandfather, and I uh, have one great granddaughter. I have uh, 19 grandkids. I've been married to the same lady for over 30, 36 years. Um, I'm considered a tribal spiritual leader for our tribe. And I was asked to come to this powwow to do prayer uh, for the people here and also to everything to run good for them and especially for them. Uh, the dancers and the singers, everybody that when they're out there dancing and singing that nothing goes wrong, that they don't drop no feathers, you know, everything is good, you know, and everybody you know, to stay healthy. It's a non-alcohol and drug-free uh, event, and that's where uh, my background comes from, is I have 38 years in the behavior health field, you know, substance abuse, working with people, and, also working with the community for Native for uh, running their uh, traditional sweat lodge ceremonies. Um, but the Powa is a, a community for them to get together and to share some of their um, their traditions, their heritage, so that they don't lose it, especially them living in town, so they still be connected to the, their beliefs, their Native American beliefs. I've been probably a good 40 years coming to the Powa. Probably the first uh, two years just as a visitor until later on they were asked to, you know, do prayer for the community and for the powers for, you know, everything to be blessed in a good way. Uh, my name is Tawny Hale. I come from the Dakota and Dene people. I grew up in the city of, Pam or I was born in the city of Panorama City. I grew up in the East Los Angeles area in the city of Pico Rivera. Um, I was very close to my grandparents. I grew up within the home of my grandparents, so it was very important to me 
um, to keep alive the culture through song and dance. That was something that was of importance to my grandparents and parents as well. So it's always been part of my everyday life. When I think of powwows, I think of I think of a dance circle that's meant to be welcoming to all tribes, all people. It's a way that was given to us long ago that allows us to express ourselves, whether it's sad occasions or occasions to celebrate. I feel dancing and singing is a form of a spiritual movement and um, being able to lift up someone through your singing is a great gift in itself. So having all these wonderful dancers and singers come here today to celebrate life and thank Creator for our wonderful way of life and culture is something very beautiful and precious that I always enjoy being part of. Um, actually, last year was my first time coming to this powwow and I actually met a lot of good families that put a lot of work into creating this uh, annual powwow and I was given the honor of serving as this year's head woman dancer and I was asked last year in a very um, respectful manner and it was, it's was it been something that I've been looking forward to for a year now and the time is here so I'm hoping that everyone catches that Indian spirit and wants to get up and dance. Good morning everybody, uh, my name is Jimmy Talcan Ramirez, I'm a Mescalero Apache, I come from Port Wanimi, California and I'm today's head man at Te Home Powwow in Bakersfield. So as a head man you're uh, pretty much uh, the leader, you're uh, the officer if you will. Uh, you're supposed to police everybody and make sure everyone's doing their task, uh, make sure everyone's dancing up to par. If they're not, that's your job to step up and kind of uh, initiate everyone to come in the circle, Indian, non-Indian, uh, at the appropriate times. Um, I dance because it, uh, every dance is equivalent to a prayer, and with that prayer, it heals the circle, it heals all people. So it's just, we're, it's all healing here. So it's my first time here, and uh, I'll tell you something, I've never felt more warm and welcome. It's as if they're my second family. As soon as I stepped in here, they're very welcoming, uh, very homing uh, environment, and uh, I love it. I'd come back again next year. Okay, I'm Val Shadowhawk. The folks here are familiar with me because I've been your announcer from the very first powwow you did here. This year had the honor of being head judge. So I wasn't married to the stage. I got to run around and dance and have fun, line up the dancers and just kind of roam around. Uh, I like to carry a microphone without a cord. I'm known as the Roving MC. Now, for my life especially, powwow, I'm 58 winners now. I've been doing powwow since I was 25, 26, over half my life. And uh, started out just as a dancer and then became a singer three years later and then went on to uh, become an announcer, arena director, whip man. And uh, the significance of powwow for us as people all over Great Turtle Island is that years ago, long, long ago before the planes, trains, and automobiles, people walked. There were trade routes throughout this land. And they put on dances usually twice a year. This is a good time because we're into the harvest. This is the equinox of the autumn. They would do that just before. That was traditionally done, especially out on the Great Plains. Three of my tribes are Great Plains. Plains, Cree, Blackfeet, and Missouri. They would get ready for winter, hunker down everything for winter time. And then uh, they have their dances. The younger people would get together in court and all that stuff. The guys, they'd grease their hair back with bear grease and look for the pretty girls and sing their doorway songs for them, court. And then uh, they, the warriors, they would get out and dance their exploits. That was for warrior societies. That's what Pow Wow was centered in at that time. And today, Pow Wow involves our younger people too. In traditional times, we traveled, we gathered, we met to celebrate as well as mourn. It was an, a foreign concept that we traveled far and that people traveled far to be with us. Adopting a powwow culture for us has meant welcoming people back into our region, bringing them back into an area that while we may be landless, it doesn't mean that we love the land any less. It doesn't mean that we don't consider this our place to caretake and to gather. And I think that that's very significant for us in terms of being able to adopt this powwow culture for ourselves as Native people and add that nuance of being a California Native and that we would have done this traditionally anyways, whether we call it a powwow or not.
Powwow is an Algonquin word, and it means the dance, it means the gathering. Uh, it's spelled P-A-U-W-A-U in the Algonquin tongue. So, yeah, powwow got, has traditions going back at least a couple centuries, if not further. And uh, they had, at the turn of the century, during the reservation era, um, a turnaround where it was not just accorded the men the rights to go into the circle, but the young people, the young boys, young girls, and the ladies. Because many of those women are also charter members of warrior societies. The Comanches had what they established called the Pony Society. And that allowed the young men, like our young uh, brave standing back behind the camera there, Seamus, when I acknowledge him, he's your Fresno State uh, brave. And those braves were warriors in training. So those were the ones that became warriors later. But they accorded them that time the, through the Pony Society, through the Comanches, to come out and dance along with the adults. My name is Seamus Elvis Bear McLeod. My favorite part is meeting people because then if you meet yeah. some new friends, yeah. you could probably be, probably be friends with them forever. Why is that? Because usually you have school friends, but those friends aren't going to be in your life so much longer. But these friends will always be in your life and you will also always have fun with you. And they'll be there when you need it most. Two words I'd say that's unique about Pow Wow, and this is for all the people that are watching. Living history. It's a continuance of something that we started long ago, our ancestors. So we have the honor of taking that and passing it on to the younger people. Hello, my name is Michael Rifle. I am from the San Carlos Apache tribe in the southeast section of Arizona. I was adopted before I was a year old. I was raised by a Lakota father from the Rosebud Reservation in South Dakota. My mother was Chickasaw from central Oklahoma, and these were the two that gave me my heritage in the northern and southern plains. When I go to mainly powwows, I'm approached by non-Indian people who tell me that in the parking lot, they hear the drum, and for some reason, that beat speaks to them in a universal manner. I can remember being 11 years old, sitting on the bleachers in a powwow in Ford Park, California, and the men were sitting 15 feet away from me. And when they were hitting that drum, I could feel it in my chest. I could feel it right where my heart is. I'm a very logical person, raised in the European schools, but I was asking myself, why do I feel that beat? I've been around other drums, I've been around other circles, but why do I feel that beat in my heart? I think right then was the first time I really connected with something very deep within inside of me. I always now get a good feeling when I hear the drum, when I hear the men sing, the knowledgeable singing men around that drum who have learned the old songs and who have composed the new songs, they lift me up. I've been told by elders that the Gore Dance songs are healing songs and they'll make you stronger and healthier. I've come to believe that. I was a skeptic, but I've come to believe in the good feelings that's delivered from the songs in the drum group. I have come into the dance circle as a Gore Dancer. And by the time we come to the second and third set of Gore Dancing, it doesn't even feel like my moccasins are touching the ground anymore because it gives me that much of a joy. Robert Vasquez, Air Force, Vietnam vet, Yaki. We all belong, and we all belong to the American Indian Veterans Association, Fresno, California chapter. Well, it's an honor to be here uh, for their tribe, for, you know, for us. So the significance of a powwow is that uh, the Native Americans, they can come together and, and celebrate each other, celebrate the traditions, the, the culture, specifically the, the dancing, you know, that they do. And we, we participate in that by bringing in the, the color, we're the color guard, we bring in the flags to start the powwow.
My name is Steve Bohe. Uh, I make my home in Long Beach, California, and I was invited down to Bakersfield to come and share our music. My drum group is called Sooner Nation. There was originally five of us, but I'm the only one left. We started back in 1990 as a necessity for having drum groups. And uh, a lot of my singers are from Oklahoma, but we made our homes in uh, the Southern California area. So hence the name Sooner Nation. I've been powering my whole life. My parents come out here in 19... 50s, in the middle 50s, on a relocation program. And when they made their way out here in the 50s, they brought their songs and their dances with them. Even before, when they were growing up, that was tried, taken from them, tried to take from a lot of our Indian people. But as we, as the government tried to urbanize us, urbanize our folks at that time, they, uh, brought them songs and dances and drums, feathers with them. And uh, they always let our family know, our immediate family, 11 brothers and sisters of ours, know where we come from. So I've been singing since I was five years old. I never danced and always uh, learned from some older gentlemen that are no longer with us a long time ago. And I try to carry that on through my sons, through my friends, and through the relationships of other tribes that I've, I've come across. I try to share the music with everybody, not just uh, certain people, but as you see this gathering here, a lot of different tribes, a lot of different songs, a lot of different dances, a lot of different ways. And we try to carry on what I was taught. I don't try to make nothing up, try to add nothing, but convey to the younger ones what my father was told, his father, his father, so on, so on. I still have a little piece of that with me this weekend. Uh, just about every song stands out to me that, I, that we sing. There's a specific meaning for specific songs, but there's also family songs, individual songs, songs that were made for warriors in the different wars, even wars with the cavalry, even wars with the Spanish, even wars with our plains enemy. Through time, there are songs that we still sing to this day that are hundreds of years old that, that uh, pertain to specific deeds, battles, births, deaths that we still sing to this day in our, in our circle here. And a lot of these people come from different parts of the United States. They can't get home to their celebrations. They can't get home to their offerings, to their teepees, to their hogans, to their log houses, their round houses. They can't get home to them, but these tribes here in California open up their land, their hearts, and their minds so that we can bring a part of our home with us out here. That we can still keep it every weekend, during the week, that we can still enjoy our way of life and this tribe here welcomed us here and this is my third second year here as their host drum host selling drum and I explained to them when I first met them that anything I can do to to uh, perpetuate our cultures no matter where we're at schools colleges different travel lands I'm there to help because I know a little bit about where I come from and a little bit where all these dances come from all these different songs all these different types of regalia. I know where they come from because I knew the people that wore I knew the people that sang these songs. They're all gone now, but yet I still have them in my heart and my mind so that I can help out our community. That's the main thing in my way of urban life, community. Without that community, we get lost sometimes. Hi, um, my name is Genevieve Leemaster and I'm originally from Yosemite National Park area. 
I was raised in Mariposa. I am Southern Sierra Miwok, and I'm a Mono Lake Paiute and Choanamni. Powwow means a lot to me because um, I'm a jingle dancer myself, so it brings a lot to the circle. And then I teach my grandkids and other youth who I am a consultant for a dance group um, in the Moore area. So I teach the kids um, the dance styles as well and the protocol and the respect to themselves as young ladies because it's very important that we respect ourselves as Native women. Um, because there's so many things going on in this world and our young ones are getting astray. So it's good to guide our future generation and that's what I'm here to do. And, and that's why I'm here too, to, just to keep in sobriety. I've been in 20 years sobriety, so I teach the kids and set them a good example to be a good role model for our future generation to come. Yeah, it's, it's a really good vibe. Like this weekend's been a really good vibe. Good, um, good feelings to it. A lot of good dancers come from different areas. And they just bring a lot of good, um, good feelings to the powwow, which is very important. Um, my name is Christina Carvajal. Uh, this is the Palili Wagon. That is the name of my business. Uh, we come from the Curry River Valley. Uh, we're uh, located out of Weldon, California, and that's where our tribe was originally from. And so we are, we've been here for thousands and thousands of years. Tabatsalaval tribe, that's us. Thank you. From the Tabatsalaval tribe. Uh, I've been here since they started. So four, four, this is the fourth one, so four years, yeah. We started when they started. So it's fun, we expect it every year. They expect us every year. So, well, you know, it's, I don't really think much of it until I get an elder that comes up to me and says, I've been to so many powwows, I've tasted so much fried rice, they're like, but your fried bread is one of the best fried bread I've had ever. I've had people come up to me and say, your fried bread reminds me of my grandma's fried bread. That's what touches my heart. That's when I know I'm doing something right. So. We dances, we're not dancing to the, the God of the wind. We're, we're remembering remembering that the wind is important, that the wind is important in our stories, our creation stories, uh, in our life today. And um, we can't forget uh, what these things are. My name is Michelle Montes. Um, I'm from the Tone Indian tribe. I'm also uh, a dancer, ASIC dancer, traditional ASIC dancer from Ontario. We have our own group um, in Ontario called Kapuli Teo Shiwi. This is my son. He led the, the dance today, and uh, my husband could give you more about what we're about. Basically, we're a traditional uh, Mexica, Mexica group. And we have our own ceremonies, but we come we come to the powwow as a way to to um, share our culture with uh, other native people, you know? um, and and it's it's really really uh, important uh, for my family because they're also part of this tribe, and so um, it's important for them to know their culture as well as as the culture that that I I bring, which is the Mexica culture. It's a way to get together. In a sort of family manner, knowing that we're all coming together for one cultural purpose and one social purpose in a way that's getting to know each other better through different things and having a little conversation with people you don't know that may be distant relatives to you. And I think it's uh, really great to have our powers in this way. Um, right now, I haven't seen my cousins in a long time. How just connects us back together, which makes it a really great time just to get get to conversate with people who really mean a lot in your life. For me, powwow is important because, um, like I said, I'm part of the tribe. My children are part of the tribe, and it's a way of connecting with our family. It's a way of connecting the fact that they're the 
the indigenous community extends from north to south, not only in the United States, but in Canada, in, in Mexico, South America, throughout the whole continent, North and South America. Um, it is a unification of one indigenous community. And it gives us the opportunity just to let, let other people know that we're still here. We're still alive. Haku, haku, la hupi wash washa cha. Samtanet masa khifwa kasila mathi vestudo. Noan chumash kasnuna yauhai. Noan kakap auhai. Greetings, I hope you're all well. My name is Matthew Vestudo. I chumash, I come from Ojai, I live in Ojai. And swaya uh, heshik posh. Happy. Hello, my name is uh, Maka Blue Wakpa and uh, I've come here to watch the dancers and um, have a good heart and uh, I'm grateful to be here. So uh, hand talk is a pan-indigenous language that predates spoken language on the, uh, in North America, and it predates English as a, as a language that we use intertribally today. So before there was English or Spanish, we use our hands to communicate with each other. And uh, we all have different hand signs for our tribes that, that identify where where we come from, and for the Lakota Sioux, which tribe I am, it is this sign, and that means the people who wear a choker on their neck, and that's something that's unique for us. And all the people here that are participating, they all used hand talk uh, uh, long ago as part of their own heritage. So part of why I'm here is to raise awareness about hand talk and to work in partnership with other tribes to bring more awareness to hand talk and to um, make it uh, part of the curriculum that students have today in school. And we heard the event upon the bike path, decided to come by and see what was this all about. And coming into it, we just said, well, let's take a quick look. We stayed longer than expected. Uh, the culture here is amazing. I think the key thing going forward, not only for this culture, but all cultures, is to never forget where we come from. And this here is inspiring to see. It's your first call? It's our first call out. Any just general impressions? Blown away. Amazing. Amazing. My name is Mike Lopez. This is my wife, Tori. And I am a member of the Tejon Indian tribe. And uh, I'm also on the Powwow Committee uh, as a volunteer. Uh, I'm a gore dancer for the tribe, and uh, I'm a Vietnam era veteran, U.S. Navy. Uh, the favorite part of the powwow for me is the dance, you know, the dancing. It's a, I, sometimes, you know, when I get to dancing, it's, it seems like I just, somewhere else, you know, and to me, and it makes my heart feel real good to them dancing, because, like I said, I, I dance for members of the tribe who can't dance, uh, ancestors who have passed, uh, veterans who have passed, the veterans we have now and future veterans. That's what the power means to me. It, 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 let's uh, the, the public know that hey, our, this tribe's around, it's going to be around for a while. It's a been here time, for a long time. It's, it's, it's always been here, yeah. So things we, were on a, we were on a committee back before then of 25 members of this tribe and it's almost a thousand now it's I remember, been, yeah. just it gives me boost pimples to see what they've done it's just it's amazing how far they've come and how much work they've put into it it's it's a uh, i'm really proud of this tribe Hakuhi Hawaks the May at Grace Hernandez. Hey, I'm from the Tejon tribe and I'm from Bakersfield, California. 
I like dancing because like it heals some people and it gives me good medicine so I can give to other people. What's special about traditional California dance? I think not because it's like the original, but like it's the way we actually dance. But like I would pick this one because it's the actual way we dance. Like we would have ceremonies or fires or like just have fun when we dance like this and just like that. So I want to do it because not a lot of people do it. Or at least I don't see a lot of people. Well, my name's uh, Cameron Bryant. I'm from Pembroke, North Carolina. Tribal affiliation is Lumbee Tuscarora, and my name of the drum group is Warpaint. And we've been together for five years. But to me, singing is a form of prayer. And I'm sitting out in that drum and I'm singing, I'm praying the whole time. Like a lot of dancers, when they're out here dancing, they're praying. We're singing for the ones that can't sing and the ones that sung before us already. And the dancers dance for those who can't dance, the ones that dance for them. So it's real, real spiritual. We have a good time. We sit, pick, and play, but it's it's real. It gets real spiritual. Our ancestors' feet have touched these grounds and have danced on these grounds. We say each step in our dance is a prayer. When our children and our elders and everyone are out there on the grounds dancing. Every time their feet are touching that ground, it's a prayer. And it's something that, again, without, with very limited access to our tribal lands, it's almost one of the only things that we have right now that we can do to continue to assist in that healing of our land and in bringing back those prayers to our land that we're praying for Mother Earth when we're dancing on her. Um, we're stepping gently, but also with might and bringing that feeling back to this area, dancing on a piece of land that hasn't been danced on in hundreds of years is, is more than special. It's, you can't put words to it. The significant of my dancing is uh, Northern traditional style. Uh, a lot of people like to dance it, but for my family itself, we actually had to go get permission from one of our uncles who lived in Rocky Boy, Montana. So one of my older cousins at the time, before we started dancing this style, went up there to ask our aunts and uncles up there for permission to use the bustles on our back because it's not native to California. Um, and once it was given permission to him, he then passed it on to us. And being able to dance this style with those eagle feathers and what they mean to us is very, it's, it's pretty powerful. Eagle feathers are very, very sacred to us. And for us to be able to wear those eagle bustles, wear the eagle feathers on our heads, and to have all those prayers to carry with you on those things, uh, it's, it's priceless to us. So that's what the dance means to me. Hey, okay, I name Mercedes Thomas, Tatsi Tuli Ho. I am of the Tachi and Tuli people, and I am this year's 2018 2019 Tuli River Senior Powwow Princess. Uh, I am from the Santa Rosa Rancheria Tachi Yoka tribe and also the Tuli River Yoka tribe. Powwow means like it's very a big part in my childhood and my teenhood. I don't know how to say it because um, I've been doing it for <clears throat> a while, a really long time since I was little, and to dance is to pray and to heal others who cannot be, cannot dance and participate in it. Um, my name is Sierra Blackwell. Uh, my favorite part of power is dancing because I get to express my feelings and my emotions while I dance. I dance for the people who can't. I dance for my family and I dance for my grandparents and most of my family members that are ill. I don't dance for the money. I don't dance for the competing. I dance for who can't. And I just be mindful and grateful of what I have. There really is, I don't want to say like there really is and there really is nothing special about a powwow, but I guess what's special is what you're honoring because different powwows honor each different things and ours is honoring our ancestors. So that's what we pretty much do and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a jingle special coming up today, if I'm correct, uh, for our great grandmother, Irene Montes. And, um, and I think just overall the special thing as well is that you're getting all these different tribes and different drums to come out and just celebrate with you on the weekend. Like, I don't want to say it's a party because we don't drink or nothing. We don't, we don't drink. So I guess just like, uh, 
I don't know what else to call it besides a party, but that's our version of a party, I guess. It's red entry time. How can you call Zonita Nawaya? Hello, good evening, my name is Zoe Gonzalez. Uh, what's unique about it to me is usually there was an old community power that was here, but now this is for our tribe, for our people, and showing that, again, for the community that we were here. Uh, my favorite part about powwows is usually probably round dances where we all come together where everyone where you don't have to be just Indian you could be anyone from the public and you could just come together with everyone and uh, dance together with any other hand drum songs. Haku Hilpo, Nadi Hernandez, Nita Wanea, Numuach Thamia, Akike Thamia, Nikim Tahon, Hamak Bakersfield. Hello everyone, my name is Nadi Hernandez. Good afternoon. I am from the Tahon tribe and Bakersfield. Being my tribe's ambassador representing as a princess was very important to me because I wanted to be a good role model representing my tribe and all the other girls who were running and it was a really good opportunity for me. I've learned a lot of new things from my family, a lot of knowledge that they gave me. My favorite part about powwow is dancing and how close the community is, like with families. When you come to a powwow, it feels very like home. Everyone's really welcoming and make sure that you're fine and are enjoying what you're doing. Well, now we're crowning the new princess for 2018-2019. It is with great pleasure that I introduce you to Miss Crystal Sanchez.
new steps, I feel more, more confident, you know, kind of like taller, I feel more, kind of like there's a lot riding on me, so I feel more proud of that. It's going to be very exciting having little kids, you know, coming up to me, like little jingle dress dancers, I see babies out there running all the time in their jingle dress dances, you know, and they're just looking at me all chubby faces. It's a good feeling, it's a great feeling to be princesses here. Our tribal princess is selected by a princess committee. Our princess committee consists of um, elder women within our tribe that are looking for the youth that embodies the values of our tribe and will be that individual that stands up and can answer their questions about culture, about our language, about our tribe and our family. Some of that selection process entails an interview that the young women go through with the body of elder women. They also have to complete an essay and turn in the essay. And then if there are girls that are competing against each other, they also have to give a dance performance that the elder women also um, review and then they make their selection from that. And then what happened last night, the crowning, after you're selected, they have you come out here and they like bring out the, the former princess, which was Nadia Hernandez. They had her dance with her full circle around and take off her crown and her sash and call me up, you know. And when I heard my name, me and my dad got all excited. We were all happy, you know. And being called up and having to dance by yourself one time dance with all my family and my sponsor, Laura Baga, the second time. It's definitely something that just, I'm never going to forget it. It's like the happiest moment in my life. 